play with with it, so no surprise there. Oracle ban, good call. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. He did a lot of work in that last game, so. Gold but gold with their next ban. Troll has been banned. Yeah. It's one of those combos that OG really likes. Troll plus Ember. They're not gonna have a chance to do that. Doom is still in the pool. They like to play it. Great counter for Ember Spirit. Not easy. Not the easiest way to execute because because of the. Yeah, mobility, Casting time right? yeah. and mobility of Ember Spirit, yeah. Also, when you pick a Doom, you need to have a good catch. You can't just Doom someone and uh, think that he's done. You need to have some kind of a stun, slow, any kind of control. Hero that hasn't been banned and that was really good in that last game is Lesh. He's still in. Mm -hmm. uh, all but gold, they ban out the Shadow Shaman. Uh, let's see if OG are going to ban out the Lesh. At this point in previous game, they banned out both uh, Doom and Drow. Yeah, Drow Ranger was an interesting ban. We were wondering. Uh, which they hero played it that. Did. Um, they played it and lost. They played it and lost. Yeah. They played but versus Flying Penguins. I it believe. did have, like, the nine-second silence was very strong. And when you're playing Ember Spirit, maybe that is too strong to deal with, or too, that you don't want to deal with it, but they do end up going for the Lash. Yeah, yeah they, they don't want flash. all but gold to have the same lineup they did uh. in the previous game. I, I, I'm pretty sure all but gold, they have something else prepared. Well, let's see if they do go for that draw, then, if their ban was, uh, was you I know, mean, founded on something. Y you were talking about the silence in the gust on the Ember, and I agree with that, but at the same time, Ember has high mobility, gets on top of Draw Ranger very yeah. easily, and if he has one more partner in crime that can do the same, that Draw is never going to have a game. So, overall, I'd and I haven't been impressed by old but gold's Draw. Uh, they didn't manage to win with it. I think they should stick to their guns, get their more casual heroes. Put Jarex on some playmaking for to create a, a lot of space. Give ILTW enough time to farm up. Uh, I think that should be the plan here. What do you give to ILTW? There's some his heroes like Chug and Terrorblade are, are still in. Let's see what they are. Uh, yeah. Jarex is our spirit yeah, I mean, this is awesome, obviously. Brings a lot of pressure to that mid lane as well. Uh, sadly, if Ember is there, there isn't. Uh, I mean, if you get a good kickback on SF, there's definitely kill, kill potential. And you don't want to have a free farming SF like in the last game. Mm -hmm. Plus, it's dire, so it's a bit harder for SF too. He doesn't have access to that super close medium camp. If they can at least slow down uh, the Shadow Fiend. Yeah, of for sure. Uh, They're going to put a lot of pressure OG? on this oh, Shadow Fiend. So, OBG, yeah. they need to have heroes who can rotate. Tiny is one, but he also lacks mana at the early stages of the game. Like, he needs to have full mana so he can TP, and he can't even use the combo. Grimstroke. Oh, that, that, that feels like Doom, Doom is going to yeah. be the next pick. I think so as well. Doom would make a lot of sense. Another hero mm -hmm. that's going to bring a lot of utility to all that yep. gold. A great combination with Grimstroke. As you can do on two targets and... Uh, yeah. The reason that OG goes for that Doom ban is because we have seen all but gold go for the combo of Doom Grimstroke. At least if you ban one, the other will probably not follow. So this is something that OG has contemplated for sure. Well, OG go for a Venge core. I don't know if this is going <laughs> to yeah. be a carry or offlane, but with that minus armor, if you lane versus Doom, it could could it's also be a mid venge, a lot of kill potential on Shadowfin. Mm, that's true. Would be an OG thing to pick. Then you would have, however, a Ember Spirit versus a potential Grim Strike Doom. Is that going to be what, what kind of lane is that going to be? Well, not too great for Ember. No, definitely. I feel like every single time there's Ember Spirit uh, on uh, on a side lane that he never has. Mm. Uh, a good time. Yeah. Like, he's always recovering. He just wants levels. First and foremost, you need levels on Ember. You want to be rotating as soon as possible. 
But for that to happen, you need levels. Also, you can't go for bottle. You can't get runes as easily. So side lane number is, I agree, not nearly as strong. This Beastmaster is a different combination, but co a combination with uh, Grimstroke, Grimstroke Soulbind nonetheless. Mm -hmm. so. It feels like they're going for the same type of plan, though, because Beastmaster is obviously something that builds an Necronomicon. You want to use that roar for a gank. You get a successful gank. You've got some sustain on your Shadowfiend, and you just push. Yeah. It's like go for gank yeah. push towers. Again, easy, Again, same one. Easy to execute yeah. lineup, same principle, and now they have toss back onto Hawk in this lane. Oh yeah, that is also uh, great <coughs> for denying creeps on the lane. Of course, as we've seen, actually OG I was the one to do that first. Wasn't that fixed? Like you can't. T mm. Can you toss the creep still on the uh, Hawk? I think you can do it on a boar if you position it well or something I like that. I think you can just do it so on a hawk. So still? you can still do it on a hawk, all right. I think so. Yeah. I didn't but I didn't see any overall I really wanna agree with you all, but Gold's lineup and draft again looks very simple, straightforward. Yeah. Uh, makes a lot of sense to me. Well OG's lineup, it's all over the place. It's strong but it it just feels harder to execute and yeah. Looks OG style though, so Alright, we'll that's see. that's promising. One more hero to finish it off for both teams. What uh, what b tick box do we need on the side of OG? I'd say we are lacking some team fight and some beefiness. Well, OG doesn't pick too many beefy heroes. Uh, Seb plays. Yeah. Yeah. Seb plays one. <laughs> Others. Uh, we've seen him play squishy. Sand King. I consider Sand King beefy. And that Sand King went Radiant, so he wasn't really beefy either. True. He had like a thousand HP. We've seen him play Slardar as well. That's true. Slardar Magnus, that's about it. I, I, I'm just not not sure where this uh, Venge is gonna go. So. Well, it seems like uh, all but gold. Like They're them. banning out Terrorblade. All right, so they think it's um, Mad Venge, and DLTW's hero is the last one to be picked, which I don't blame them. Makes most sense. Who? Something for DLTW now. Yeah, yeah. Um, some core. Juggernaut's out of the option yeah. because you're playing into Beastmaster into against mm -hmm. Lycan, yeah. all these units. Your ulti is not that effective. There's going to be a lot of attack speed coming out from Beastmaster and Lycan. Again, a lineup that can take the Roche quickly, even if you just get, get a one pick off. The only one that comes to mind for me is the Centaur. And then you would have a safe lane Venge. Or mid Venge, but a safe lane Ember Revenge. That has position one and two and something else for Seb. But I I'm not I don't I don't like it. Yeah, I, I can't blame you because it, this lineup looks hard to finalize. It looks hard to finish and they go with the tide. Th this is I'm, I'm wondering though, is this Venge gonna be on the safe lane or not? Let's see. Most likely they're gonna put yeah, Seb Tide versus the Versus the Lycan. We saw mid tide earlier today. Oh, it was him. very succe successful. Tops and Venge. Mm. They're going to need to rotate heroes on mm. mid to save this oh. shadow. And there's going to be a lot of dives. Uh, I like OBG's lineup again. They're, they're going to play fast. Uh, it opens up the Roche. Really snowbally. Vision game is good with all those uh, wolves. Hawk from Beastmaster. Once he gets Necro, they're going to get rid of the vision. Even if their laning stage does not go super well for G, he can still recover in the jungle and get the items that he needs. So I think that's the lane that we have to be looking at the most, that mid lane, and how well uh, Jerax is going to be able to rotate around G and, and kill him a few times with Thompson. Because okay. if he... Yeah, yeah the, the mid lane is going to be the focus point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. All right. Let's see what's going to happen in game two of the series and if we are going to have a third game at all or if old but gold can close it out. Let's head over to Lyrical and Trent. Thank you so much, Shiver. And yeah, man, this is looking kind of rough, Trent. Um, Lycan last pick, just running at people, taking down towers. Yep. I'm, I'm very concerned for OG, but old but gold, everything's looking all fine and dandy. Yeah, it feels like OG have been running into the wall of this like really fast aggression from numerous teams. And once again, in the second game, uh, potentially their last, they're going to find it once more. 
Uh, I like the Tide. I think it matches up very well against a lot of the heroes that Olba Gold have brought, but I, I'm not so certain about uh, just who's on what. I'm really surprised. Just see, like, Thompson on the Venge seems kind of crazy to me, considering it's like, oh, it's a w. of course this guy's got a good Ember too, but, you know, there's this Thompson guy. He's pretty good at Ember too. Yeah. And OG, they, they've got enough Ember players, apparently, mm -hmm. uh, amongst their rosters. So, uh, But uh, it does come back to just what lane you're going to be playing in. He's going to be playing mid. He wants to be getting the kills onto the, uh, the Shadow Fiend, and that 100% makes sense, of course. You don't want to be sending the Ember Spirit into the mid lane, so uh, we will uh, get to witness the, the glory of mid Vengeful Spirit to see if this will be enough to give them a fighting edge uh, against all these heroes at the start of the game. And they have a really good hero to help out that uh, Vengeful Spirit as well, and the, the Earth Spirit. So, you know, Spirit action going against the Shadow Fiend. We'll see if it works out for them. And I, I also, I mean, we did see LTW play Ember a couple of times in the qualifiers, and, you know, that was when Ember was looking incredibly broken, was getting Rampage after Rampage. So both LTW and Topson do have the Ember, but he's been the one that's been playing it more often recently, I think, Topson. So we're going to have a little bit of chance already from the crowd. Much more packed here on the weekend. Oh, when you folks. can hear it. Uh, now, they have the Bane down bottom, so they're going to try and get three the runes here if they can. Goes to the toss, doesn't go for the avalanche here, and uh, oh, he's still able to get the bounty. I don't know how Valhor does it. This guy's pretty good. Yeah. And looked like uh, No Tail was going to beat him to it, but uh, not possible. I mean, No Tail not uh, skilling anything amongst that. Despite spending so much time next to those two heroes, and I wonder if it means he's going to try this in Feeble once again. He seems to really prefer it uh, as the first skill in the lane. But he's going to be facing three heroes already here. Yeah, this feels like it might have to be a brain sap game. And now moving forward here, to be able to hit that ink swell. Good amount of damage. Man score in a little bit of trouble. Roll forward. A little bit off the mark there from Jarek. A rare miss on his most comfortable hero, I would say, is they're going to get a full on try v try. And what is the benefit of a try lane? Yeah, pull Earth Spirit there. Oh, so wonderful. And where does Earth Spirit want to be? Not in a tri lane. No. Uh, yeah, I mean, this was the, the first downfall of this hero, was teams essentially doing this every single game. Oh, Vanscore alive on nothing, and now No Tail is the one that's going to get ran down here, although they get the body blocks. Now going to try and turn it back around with the Brain Sap. Roll forward, getting the kill. It's on Jarex. That's the man you want. Yeah, it looks like Vela went for that toss to stop the attack animation of No Tail there. Um, so it helps secure that or, uh, well, secure the save, rather, onto his Grimstroke, but yeah, he ends up paying for it. Uh, no body blocks in time there from Illidan. And this is the strength of oh, running the Oh, you can see. Oh, that bottom, not quite enough. He goes through the roll through. Oh, oh, he gets, oh, he gets the range creep plus one. Very nice. So, okay. doesn't have to worry about cutting the trees, just rolls over them, destroys them, and uh, gets the pull. So, really solid stuff here. Gonna help deny some of this. And they're gonna get the deny on one of the range creeps under the tower as well. OG looking real good in this try v try action. Yeah. Well, and, and again, like, you take a look at the CS right now. Everything's looking quite good for OG uh, across the board. Tied 10 and 1. You've got the Venge 10 and 2. Um, but really, the fear that you have with this old but gold lineup is that eventually you're going to get into those big team fight abilities uh, and, and, you know, items as well. The Guardian Greaves, uh, you know, Helm of the Dominator on the yeah. Lycan. And then you just group together and push. And I don't know, what's OG's answer to that in this game? It's pretty damn scary, right? I mean, the first three items for their three cores are going to be probably Vlad's Helm and Mech. Yeah. That's real spooky. Like, <laughs> these guys are just going to be running at you. Uh, the answer is going to have to be Tidehunter. I mean, he's going to be building a lot of his own as we see the go on the IOZ W, and man, that's a lot of burst damage. And this Ember just trying to get out of there, taking some of those extra right clicks, needs one more, and they will find it. So Vanscore getting the kill on the board for Old Buck Gold. And it's not necessarily the best uh, Soulbind game, really. Uh, the Roar, of course, has been a standard classic, but aside from that, there's not all too much going on, but uh, what he does have is the ink spell working in combination with someone like the uh, the lichen especially just being able to get himself in there and add an extra element of control and a little bit of damage added on yeah and i think the panel lizard was uh, alluding to the fact that you know you have this combination that you would normally see of the grim stroke and the doom as g chased but the turnaround g gonna try and play the money angle gets the kill but the illusion chasing is the illusion gonna be enough no it's gonna be brought down here as well gets a couple denies before he ends up uh, expiring. But the, the thing that he was alluding to was that oftentimes you'd have the Grim Stroke together with the Doom, and maybe the worry there was with the Venge picked up, you wouldn't want to run that Doom. And it's a nice reaction having the Beastmaster instead, uh, since you don't have that low armor hero that would have maybe gone up against him in lane. 
Yeah, I think the uh, the aura from Beastmaster 2 is just disgusting with yeah. the, the strat that they're running, right? Radiance. You can imagine, it'll you know, look a lot like last game with the minus armor and the edict, but this time will just be minus armor and all this attack speed amongst uh, oh, the Thompson. army of heroes and creeps. Potentially getting baited here, and they have the toss back. Stun, Man, roll forward, find EG. They turn it back around, though. Able to almost get the kill to Inkswell. It's going to not be enough to keep the SF alive. So they take down the SF first. All right. I mean, Thompson's dying again, though, which is a little bit rough. At least he's gained the XP this time, of course. Is Vanscore living here? Vanscore? Ooh. That was a lot of gold to Velor, too. And uh, when you're playing the support time, like, <laughs> he skips over the Arcane Rune because he wants to get right to that side shop, buy himself a bottle, come back for the Arcane Rune, and then he wants to fight for the bounties, too. Yeah. This guy is going to be a force to be reckoned with early on here if he can get into some of those early items. All those rotations been though, you can see LCW is getting a lot of breathing room down here. Oh. Just hitting some creeps, chilling out like he's been in the jungle a bit, and once again the action is in the mid lane, but will not be a finished kill there. On to G, and uh, the five minute uh, timer is coming up here soon. No one of the top bounties right away, but the bottom one, uh, No Tail, will be securing there on the vein. Yeah, should be able to get it. Illidan is moving over to the side also, though, and the roll to interrupt. Jerex takes it. Can't quite find any type of oh. kick yet. Oh, the chain's onto the creeps instead. And summoning the wolves, it will be able to go for the body blocks now. Slight of fist, lots of damage. Need to walk away, trying to slow him down, but the brain sap will find the kill. And now the ink swell with Velhor there finds the toss, interrupting it, finding the stun afterwards, and Jerex also going to go down. Yeah, and Velor was just up top through the avalanche to secure himself the bounty rune away from the tide. That's what gave him the man to make this rotation down here with that arcane rune present. And now he's moving on to ILTW. This guy is so good at tiny. He just does it over and over. A double kill for this tiny. Four, one, and one. Out of control right now. And I mean, that's the other thing too, right? He's, you have he's these... the highest dire net worth hero. <laughs> that's a hell of a hell of a start for a he's tiny. He's two and two. What? This is insane. Yeah, he's making it happen. I mean, but that's the thing that I'm thinking about, right? Is that you have these big tanky cores that are going to be like, you know, stepping in front of everybody. And then Tiny's going to have his Blink Dagger in time to toss people back when they go for the push. It's just going to happen. G, just outside of the vision there. There is a ping that comes out. And it looks like they're going to let G finish that TP. Oh, Vanscore doing some fake out movements there with his Grimstroke. Very sneakily, put, like pretending to be boarding uh, the area, but Notail already hit a sentry down, so he's not going to end up wasting one or anything. Okay. And Valor will secure himself another rune there. It'll just be an illusion, unfortunately, this time. Probably the, the worst one for a tiny. And Feeble onto the SF. Really causing that many issues. So it looks like Topson is just going to be able to pull this creep wave back the other direction and up top again. Yeah, there's a question of who's going to blink first up right? here, right? We have Ravage versus Roar. Uh, of course, it's much easier for the Beastmaster to get a kill threat just because he's the TP rotation uh, potential, but it's still a lot to chew through when it comes to Kraken Shell. Yeah. Not the easiest one in the world for either. And it's going to be a Vlad's done for that Tide. See if he can slowly start to chip him down. No tail, squaring off against Van score. And on the other side of it, it's Illidan farming against the Earth Spirit. Yeah, both of them just kind of lurking around and stealing some XP. Jax even using the kick to take away the potato. Last hit on the, the uh, Hell Bear. But no yeah, the big wraparound. And now with the Grim Stroke in the area, they're going to pull him back close. Ravage is available if they want to use it, but oh, no mana no, on uh, Seb. He didn't skill it either. He's at seven. And he yeah. used them all. Didn't hold the point or anything. You can't really blame him because he wasn't really planning on having help, I don't think. Right. So Lycan getting close to the Helm of the Dominator. Just pick it up from the side shop once it's all ready. And, and this is the thing is, you know, when this timing comes around, do you expect to see, like, a, a full group up from uh, the side of Olba Gold, or is it just more like run around as two or three fine kills? No, it definitely feels like group up. I mean, I don't see why you wouldn't. It looks like it's going to be a damn good game for it at this rate. Uh, and then they're just going to be looking to abuse the cooldown of Ravage. All right. That's going to be the, the major question mark for OG when this all starts kicking off. Thompson keeps getting his farm up. All of the Dire in about that same area of net worth with the exception of the Grimstroke. And 
Again, a testament to how good of a game this has been for this beast, map, or rather for the tiny. Yeah, still so far up there. And our spirit's still just trying to soak up whatever farm he can. Speaking of up there, seven four heroes. Under the tower. And there are four heroes nearby. Well, there's the group up. Find the stun. Get the raise. Oh, that was quite the is dead. meander. <laughs> just, I guess he thought no one else was in the area. He just does a little loop around the trees, and suddenly they all appear like a magic trick. I mean, that's the thing. Like, they have wards in multiple lanes. They have wards in the jungle, and they didn't see anybody, but still playing pretty far up. And the roll will now find themselves. Vanscore kicked back towards No Tail. Inkswell. Stun. Silence is saving them for now, team. Walking away from there, they're able to get the Nightmare off. Belhar also going to be chased down. The Roar comes out up there on the top side of it as they try and take down this Tiny. But the Toss Away keeps him alive in the bottle region after the fact. Meanwhile, up here in the north, they're able to take down No Tail. Vanscore lives, but only for a moment as they eventually do kill him off. But Jerix is now out of mana as the Ravage is going to come out, trying to interrupt it all. They finally take down Belhar, but now the buyback coming and the swap for Topson wants to get involved. Not sure if it's going to happen, though, as they have Illidan showing up, starting to lay into them with these right clicks, and Belhor is back again for a little bit of mischief. The Avalanche is going to come out in a second if he wants to get him. Toss as well afterwards. Can't quite find it as of yet. And instead, it was a nightmare on a no-tail himself. Oh, the die back on Velor. This could be a little bit rough for them, and it does look like they've finally overstepped a little bit, but they got the kill on the Seb still. Yeah, I think Illidan missed out on the fact that uh, IOTW had no mana. So he's just standing right next to him with his ulti running on the like, and he just starts ignoring him because he thinks he's probably going to start running away or something, but he probably could have just killed him solo uh, as that fight was kicking off. Perhaps a, a missed opportunity there. And ends up going uh, pretty well for OG overall, I would say. I, that fa fight uh, probably in their favor, considering the status of the two teams heading into it and exactly what they need, especially the fact that they didn't lose uh, ILTW because he has high aspirations. Um, he did have the bots queued up. He has now switched to treads, but he is still keeping the battle theory. So we'll see if he keeps that on this track um, after already ditching the bots. Um, I mean, it does feel like he needs to be the man this game. Jeez, he has Vlads and Medallion. I thought he might have given up on part of his Vlads or something for a moment, but uh, he is extremely farmed on BZZ. That Beastmaster. I mean, it means that Roche is going to just be an inevitability. As soon as they find a couple pickoffs, they can run right into the pit. And this is also pre greeds but the Beastmaster moving into position. They're able to find the stun onto the Shadow Fiend. Reckoning Souls comes out, but the Silence is already there. Now getting a little bit of extra vision. They have the catch, but G still lives through this whole initiation. Silence, long duration on the Tidehunter, pushing him away again. They take down No-Tail. Ravage not up for 38 seconds, so the Toss Forward is going to be able to find that kill onto Seb in just a second here. That got ugly real fast. I mean, they enfeebled and gripped the Tiny back under the Tier 1 tower, and then they started focusing G, couldn't finish him off, and then suddenly they're like, oh, yeah, we don't have Ravage. And that whole time they're playing without Topson, too, who does get a Tier 1 tower in the bottom lane. But again, it feels like if you're going to take this fighting core, you you want to bring him in when you're fighting, right? <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I think he just wasn't quite ready either because he's still going to finish up his drums. So LTW now looking for another grab on Velor. Okay. Uh, his game falling off pretty fast, considering how close he was to a really uh, early blink. He's now actually tied back up with Jerax, as Jerax was able to escape without dying in that last fight. Yep. Closer and closer he gets towards that blink, but it's going to keep on being hampered, particularly you know, like he said with that dieback. Going to pop the shrine now summoning a bird, going to send down towards the south side of the map. And a smoke up coming from OG. They want to head into the jungle, and G is there. We ping him, but he's going to TP out. Sensing some Dyer's danger. Top tower is under attack. Right, especially the fact that this Tide is just playing so deep like that under the tower. Uh, I mean, they know he is Ravage, but uh, the whole team wants to play around Ravage at this point. Uh, we got two more minutes until the bounties, so both teams going to be considering that around the 15-minute mark. You might see... Um, G try and force down this tower, and then you might see some of the heroes rotate top, right? You can kind of fake that we're standing behind our Shadow Fiend. We all TP top. We try and force a fight near the bounties, but um, the last thing they want to do is take a 4v5 into Ravage. So it might just end up being a little bit of a stalemate here as uh, both teams will push tower on tower. Yeah. And this time around, it does feel very different, where OG are actually able to get some of that tower push themselves, taking down this tier 2 top. And with the glyph already used up there, 
it will be an inevitability. Well, but Gold don't have anything like a Underlord to try and get any quick pullback to the top lane, so they are going to need to start TPing people because OG are going high ground right now. Yeah, they got this Venge. It's uh, so much damage. In the aura. Are they just going to try and base race for Tier 3 and Rax? They're going to trade off Rax at this point? Okay, I I'm down. Interesting. Get rid of the buildings. Why not? Keep it going. Um, can OG get back to defend this other one? faster games? You know, I have a little <laughs> bit of turbo mode. That's cool. <laughs> It's all right, the roll's going to swing and a miss there. It's a long TP. Velhor, they've got him caught for the moment. Silence out. It's connecting onto a lot of them. And they're going to buy back on the Grimstroke, try and get back oh. into play with the rest of these so heroes. And they got the grip there onto G. He's going to go down. Where's they that Ravage? Kill off the Shadow Fiend. Seb trying to walk away now. They haven't been able to get the barracks yet, but on the other side, they were able to take it on over gold. So if they can protect it here, it'd be oh, really good, but bye. it's not going to happen. They get the silence to turn it back around, and now the mechs try and keep them alive. Requiem of Souls just tickling for the moment, but they do manage to kill off that Earth Spirit. Is it going to be enough, though? G turned upon. They take down Illidan in the base. They buy back now on this Lycan, and BZC also going to be controlled. OG are gambiting them, basically, at this stage. They take down the melee barracks themselves, trying to walk and secure this, but Illidan, he can't afford to die right now. He just bought back. They pull back in G. He's also going to go down. What more can they do? All right, and Avatar's trying to interrupt this one. Bellhor, seeing if he can turn this game back around, but they take down the Shadow Fiend, and LTW eventually going to fall. Thompson, the last man standing, is going to try and kill off BZZ oh, here. Don't worry, there's another one of them coming out here. But they do find that kill, and so Thompson loses his life, but... An early trade of barracks, why not? Unhealable damage, hit the range tracks. Oh, <laughs> why? Okay, well, that was something. Uh, <laughs> not the most common thing in a game. I thought we'd be concerned about bounty runes, and they were concerned about <laughs> bounties on the lives of some rats, right? I mean, that's standard 15-minute gameplay. Four buybacks from the side of Olba Gold. That's going to hurt your economy. They end up losing 300 or so uh, at the end of that, and it's about a 2K gain for OG, uh, as well as, of course, uh, both teams losing. Uh, it was a full set of racks, to be fair, loss for OG, whereas uh, they will get to keep their range racks here. Now, I mean, it's it's very strange, but I guess it kind of works out. I, I mean, with the buybacks, it definitely favors uh, OG. Yeah. I mean, they're sitting on top, right? Three cores. They got themselves a nice 4K lead. Uh, the Roche. Until the Ravage, they can't go in as Radiant. I don't know if you want to try and rush this as Dire. It seems like they might be thinking about it here. Yeah. Radiant are scanning. I mean, that's crazy. How often do you see a full Radiant set of scanning. racks taken bottom before a Tier 1 tower in the other two lanes? Oh my goodness, that's <laughs> a risky business. Scary. Scary, scary. Soulbind. They got the roar up again in a second if they wanted to use it. Do they decide to go for it? No, just going to back out afterwards. And well, the toss away Velhor saving BZZ for the moment while Illidan just going to try and take down No Tail with all the summons. But they do need to back out, and the mechanism is going to keep them survivable. But LTW jumps forward. He's going to get silenced. No, nope. interrupted. Able to dodge away from that one. Uh, Grimstroke, Ravage is back pull back in. in. Second. Uh, Ravage comes out and connects on the four. They're going to fail to find this kill. Roll forward from Jerix. The stun comes out afterwards. Trying to interrupt it. Everybody's so low. Can they take him down in time? Yes. He has no souls left. Belhor trying to make something happen for his team. But OG is chasing forward. And Seb on this Tide Hunter, making the difference. Needs a gush. Needs an anchor smash. It's not looking like it's going to happen. The and the standing. silence comes out at the last second. Triple kill for Illidan. And they are so freaking low right now. But. They're still living through this. And Vanscore going to be able to make the TP out happen. Velor is just the team medic here, making those big saves on BZZ earlier on. And uh, now just tangling a little bit with the uh, Thompson illusion. We'll take it down. Oh, my god. All right. So they uh, managed to use Ravage the instant it comes off cooldown. And so the vast majority of that damage coming out uh, from Seb. But honestly, that fight went really well for all the gold. Yeah. I'm surprised. I mean, they started at 4v5, and uh, they used the Lycan ulti very early in that engagement. But uh, then they kept chasing from the side of OG. They kind of forced it this time themselves. And uh, perhaps just the the greater amount of auras from the side of Old But Gold helping themselves out right there. Right, the Greaves done this time. We do have to be wary. The Crimson Guard that's going to come out for this Tidehunter, I think, makes a really big difference. Particularly now that it's, you know, Howl attack speed instead of just straight up bonus damage. And then having that attack speed on Beastmaster, it doesn't matter as much if you've just got the straight damage block. 
Yeah, Tide is uh, one of the only like one hero answers to uh, like mass creep summons and everything. You get a big Ravage off, you manage to get an Anchor Smash onto them all, damage reduction, uh, just pop and pick yourself. The Kraken Shell makes you very pretty much immune to them. Dyer's middle tower is under so uh, attack. he is opting fully into that in terms of his build. Yeah. Granted, Old But Gold can still get some good split pushing going out if they need to with a Lycan potentially and you know, but the problem is there's nowhere else really to split push right now on the map. They need to take down these other tier one towers. And also not give up Roche. So Old But Gold grouped together as five up on their high ground. Dyer's middle tower and still OG able to hold this side of the map, these tier ones up. Even taking out the little wolves being sent around. Seb just doing a bit of face checking, you know. Yeah. Throwing himself in the pit for a moment. Yeah. Everyone's just like forced into this top lane with the Roche. So uh, in the end, this is pretty great for Old but Gold, right? Because they end up getting the lane advantage on that bottom lane, which is uh, pretty much the best place possible when you're trying to control Roche, right? Yeah. Uh, and you can see it's forcing Jarex to play really far away from his team. He's always revealing here, but uh, because they still have that shrine, they can still contest Roche. If you're old but gold, that's probably why they went for this kind of weird play with the ward and everything on the high ground, because ideally, the real goal for them is that shrine. Mm, try and make sure there's no buyback plays into the Roche pit. And look at this, a smoke heading in. No they're, tail they're popping. Yeah. No tail sees them with their observer sentry combo on the high ground, and there's no sentry here for the dire. So they're getting very well read here, and uh, the tower just being forced. By seven tops and the calling the bluff right now of old but gold and they're not getting a whole lot for it. Yeah, nothing at all Just really. Just tier one. It does look like they're gonna pressure for the tier two top now afterwards. But OG is gonna respond to this one. It looks like Seb up front and center. The avalanche toss. Oh, that's a great kill. Gonna be able to find that one at the very least. Now, can they get any more off to the side? They buy back now on the bay. Need to be Don't careful. They're in really deep here. Got to be very wary of the grip that comes out with the roar to try and interrupt it. And Bane just gets eviscerated. Die back for him. And now LTW also interrupted, but the Ravage is going to come out, connect onto all of them. A DD on Ember trying to chase forward, see what he can do. But the Greaves is going to be there to keep him alive. Even though they lost that Beastmaster, they might still feel comfortable trying to walk out of this one. Jerax is here now. He's the chase down. Chase forward, pull back in on to Illidan. The silence is there as well. Velhor can't really do all that much to defend his heroes. And LTW able to dodge away from a lot of that damage. Lives through it all. Two dead on the side of Old Buck Gold. And this is looking like it could be Roche afterwards. Uh, Velhor able to juke the roll. Reads that there's no stuns left, so he will get out of there on the tiny. And uh, G getting out as well. But perfect timing on the Ravage there from Seb. Stopped a very optimal... Requiem that was coming over from the Shadow Fiend, and uh, well, then uh, yeah, it kind of was the ILTW show after that. And, uh, almost doing uh, 4,500 damage in that fight, half of what was put out from OG. So, despite the quick die back there from No Tail, it didn't end up hurting them too much. They forced the roar onto him instead of the Ember, which was a big part of that engagement, right? It's very hard for them to actually focus down this Ember Spirit without it. And Roche going down, but it doesn't feel like Old But Gold willing to take a chance in there as of yet. Aegis, gonna be given to LTW, can play that much more aggressive and has the first makings of a Daedalus. All out damage here. Yeah. A very strange game still. 4,000 gold lead, but each side has a melee racks at least. The fights have all felt uh, like pretty OG favored, I would say. Right. Uh, it seems every time we're engaging somewhere, the vision advantage is heavily in OG's favor. Um, I guess it's kind of hard to tell because we're also judging that mostly based off of wards, whereas there's these little invisible hawks that can be a, a bit harder to detect and what wolves, vision you're getting. Yeah. Boars too. For sure. But uh, it, it just kind of seems like they're able to run these fights largely based off of that. And plus, we were worried about uh, Old But Gold exploiting the Ravage cooldown timing has not been an issue at all, honestly. Uh -uh. They, they tried that one time to kind of push into that shrine area when the Ravage was down for about 30 seconds, but by the time uh, the fight was starting to, you know, get to any point where it was 5v5, the Ravage was back up, so. Not quick enough from Old But Gold, which uh, is surprising considering all the other games they've had so far. So OG finally figuring out a strategy that seems to be keeping pace with Old But Gold. And uh, it's still anyone's game right now. Uh, of course, the Aegis is uh, definitely going to be helping out on the Radiant side, but it is only the Aegis for now. Um, we're not like Aegis and Cheese Life, so both teams already have a big lane to worry about too, so it's kind of hard to just run down this game at the moment for OG. They'd love to get some vision up in this area, right? You know, 
Johan Prophet. He'd have wards all up in here right now, but a little bit harder on the Bane. So let's let's get in there. I'm trying to abuse this Aegis. Well, G. Gonna be the one found here, it looks like. The slowdown coming with the Gush swap forward. They got the grip and they got their man. Sometimes the Shadow Fiend just dies. Yeah, nice use of the uh, swaps done there. So, the lead being accentuated and with Ravage still up, feels like it could be just time to go. No buyback because of 450 gold. No tail pulling the creep wave over towards the mid, so that bottom will also push out, and they don't have to deal with the pressure on their lanes. It's still a bit hard at the moment. I mean, this Grimstroke, he's going to cut the wave, and guess who's coming mid? It's Velor. He's going to be looking for the next one. How quick can they destroy these creeps? They don't have a glyph, Ooh, but they pull back in onto BZZ, and man, can't afford to have that happen. He buys back, though, wants to get into the fight, but you don't Soul have the roar of time. Yep. They do manage to kill off the secondary creep wave. There's one more that's coming afterwards. Illidan in behind. Trying to find it. What can they do here? Ravage is still available. This is looking really deadly. And Seb going to just pop it off there. Connects onto all five yet again. And the follow-up coming. They're going to chase down onto G. This was just respawning on the Shadow Fiend. The souls never looked so sad as ILTW taking a lot of damage, but it's only the Aegis. And Illidan eventually also going to fall. OG striking back in a big way in game number two, looking like they're going to take this one as they chase forward for more. Four dead, and the creeps are coming. It's not often that the, the lack of souls really winds up being a big problem for you for a Shadow Fiend, but when it's these buybacks, like forced inside the base, he was kind of the worst hero to get picked off because of that, right? Came nice back into that fight with 18. Very difficult to do anything, and yeah, Velo is just forced to watch this. Uh, they don't hit the buildings too hard. Of course, the Venge being alive definitely helps. So they're slowly chipping away here. There will be a Requiem back up, but again, he's only going to have nine souls at this point. Uh, he's not the most threatening SF of all time. No. And almost looking hesitant here from OG. Yeah, I mean, they don't have the Earth Spirit with them. They're actually going to TP the Lycan behind enemy lines. They're gonna try and wrap around on him he here. He doesn't have ulti for another 25 seconds though. I don't know if this is gonna work. They're bringing in the Earth Spirit also and Seb might have spotted him there. The pings come out. But one more lane to potentially go for. As OG feeling very Ooh, in top control lane of this too, game. This catapult, they did not get this cleared in time. Is it gonna take it? Chunked. Got it. Yeah, it looks like they do get that top range barracks. So 26 minutes, 13,000 net worth lead, and moving down the bottom lane next. I mean, I don't know. It, looking at this Tidehunter pick, it's just been such a key part of everything that's kept them around in this one. Yeah, it really was perfect. Uh, and I think uh, the mid-venge, of course, just like opting into that. I think the venge likely was picked in the idea of it being a, a Sev hero, or at least the flexibility for that, but just seeing the opportunity to put a mid for the kill threat with the... Uh, Earth Spear was a great idea. Yeah. And I mean, of course, we've seen Midventure before. Uh, it definitely works in this sort of a strat. In fact, it would often be kind of a replacement hero for this SF that we're banned out. Tidehunter, the one that's trying to be in front of everybody else. 16 yeah. seconds until Ravage, if they want to take it, Silence out as well. And now they've got him caught. The damage coming out from the Daedalus of ILTW. You're so nice is the call, but the BKB is out from G. They have the roar as well. It's not looking like it's quite going to be enough damage, though. The Silence trying to take off the bug as well. And now that they have it, now they've got Ravage. Turn it back around one more time again. ILTW jumps forward. They find their man, roll forward on the G, and this Shadow Fiend has never been so sad before as all are dead, yep. and we're going to game number three. Beautiful game here from OG. Uh, they go right back for the Ember, but they mix it up a little bit in terms of the general pacing of the game, and they really found that way to match uh, what they, they've been lacking. Uh, yeah. Some early game team fight potential, something that can actually butt heads with their opponents, and uh, that was the craziest 15 minutes uh, <laughs> I think I've seen, at least uh, that early in the game. It's not often you get yourselves a little base race like that. And uh, it looked really good for all but gold at first, right? Because they, they're the ones who got the melee racks first, and then they right. started TPing back. But OG just got those perfect jumps, and they held that Ravage for so damn long until it was the absolute perfect moment, hit all five heroes, and helped secure themselves a big advantage there. And uh, they, they left that trade off of the Raxes with the lead after previously being trailing behind. So... Really solid stuff from them. Good uh, game calling throughout that entire match, really. Well, and to me, this is just an indication, again, of how important these drafts are. Game number one felt like it was an outdraft. Game number two, the same type of thing. 
We'll have to see what happens in game number three as we get ready to head back into it. Go to a quick break and we'll be back for that final match in this elimination here at the Star Ladder Minor. <laughs> 